Good morning, how's everyone? I wanna welcome everyone at all of our different environments. You know, we're one church in many, many different locations. I wanna say hi to those who are in downtown Dallas. We have, go ahead and clap, come on now. We have just a great, great campus in downtown Dallas. If you've not been by, check it out one weekend. Also downtown Fort Worth. I love Fort Worth. Plano, you've heard of Plano, Texas. Of course, we also have a church in Miami, South Miami, what's up? And then in Midtown Miami, our online campus, we're seeing all over the place, so. Welcome to Fellowship Church. Now, I saved one campus for last, our campus in Columbia, South Carolina. Columbia is the capital of the great state, and a friend of mine, Greg Dowie, pastored a church there called Friend Church for several years. Greg and I have known each other for 41 years. You might be going, man, Ed, there's no way that you're even over 35. Yeah, I am. I've known Greg for 41 years, and he is uh, one of my closest friends. Well, as God orchestrated this whole scenario, Fellowship Church merged with Friend Church, so now we have Fellowship Church Columbia, South Carolina. And we're in the process of purchasing a beautiful location right in the heart of this great city. Well, this series, Pain Management, has been a series that's been unbelievable. I'm telling you, so often in today's world, people think, yeah, you know, you follow the Lord and you live a pain-free life. It's all about health and wealth and being positive. Well, that's fine and dandy, but the bottom line is, those of us who follow the Lord deal with pain. We deal with suffering. And we've heard from Greg Rollinger, we've heard from Tracy Barnes, and today we're hearing from Greg Dowie, our campus pastor. Greg is someone who has dealt with pain for the last two decades. So I thought, man, in planning this series, no one could better talk about pain than Greg Dowie. He's a pastor, our campus pastor in Columbia, South Carolina. Uh, literally, Greg is like a brother to me. He's an amazing guy. His nickname is Uncle Dowbow. So let's give a warm welcome for Greg, Uncle Dowbow Dowie. I got to show that to Dan. Yeah, you love it. You love it. You may be seated. Wow, what a privilege, what an honor it is for me to bring this series, Pain Management, to a close. I, I suppose at the end of the year, I'm going to reflect back on this. This is going to be my favorite series. Pastor Ed did an incredible job, a spectacular job, three weeks ago, setting this up, laying the foundation for this. I will forever, for the rest of my life, Remember Greg Rollinger's words, there is value in the struggle. And I was ready to go weeks ago, ready to go. I had 90 minutes worth of stuff. I was going to complain and compare all day long, but uh, Tracy Barnes preached to me. Stop comparing, stop complaining, start celebrating, stay in the house. Man, just incredible, incredible words to live by. I love it. Um, let me begin by asking a question, difficult question. This is a difficult message for me. Uh, difficult stuff I'm going to share with you. How many of you are in pain today? I don't care what kind of pain it is. Relational, physical, uh, addiction. Maybe you've gone through the death of a friend, a spouse, a child. Um, one thing about pain is, though, is uh, many times as believers, as Christians, as people that are seeking God, we don't understand the correlation of, uh, of maybe sin and suffering. We're trying to figure that out. How many of you are in pain, and this is a tough one to raise your hand on, how many of you are in pain and you just don't get it? You don't understand why you're in pain. Yeah, it's a, it's a hard thing. I want to talk to you about um, how to live out the rest of your life 
Maybe going through trouble, being in pain. That's hard. I'll tell you that 21 years ago, about this time, my gorgeous redheaded bride and I were about to go down the aisle to the altar to be married. And I was marrying way above my head. And my wife is brilliant. She is a go-getter. Used to get up at five o'clock in the morning, go to midnight. She was a professional ballerina. She's been in uh, production in, uh, for uh, the news business. And uh, wow, I'm, I'm thinking, yes. Boy, I'm gonna just let her work and I'm just gonna vacation the rest of my life. And, uh, and I thought, really, that wow, what? a great helpmate she will be to me in ministry, and she is, but not in the way I thought. Missy began to experience these crazy, funky, wild symptoms. She lives in pain 24 hours a day. Never is she without pain. She began 21 years ago passing out. The doctors say that she has this thing called neurocardiogenic syncope. Neurocardiogenic syncope, you may know what that is. It's some kind of relation between the heart and the brain, and she passes out at the drop of the hat. She doesn't feel it coming, she just goes out, drops. And it is okay if she's lying in bed when she passes out. But if she's walking around the house, it just comes on, no advance warning. She may hit her head on something. I can't tell you how many times my son has called me home. Daddy, you gotta get home quick. I can't tell you how many times we used to go to the emergency room with a concussion. Listen, you got a concussion? Call me, I can tell you what to do, okay? We don't even go to the doctor anymore. We don't go to the ER anymore because she's experiencing concussions. We know what to do. We know what to expect. And uh, after 75 doctors, specialists, clinics, hospitals, Chiropractors, acupuncturists, everything but voodoo. <laughs> we are still no closer to an answer. Many times uh, over the years, people said, great, let me, let me pray over you. Let me pray for you. Let me come to your house and, and, and cast out demons. Let me anoint Missy with oil. We've done all of that stuff. And folks say, hey, Greg, Missy, you don't have any faith. You don't have faith enough. Word to the wise. If you ever meet my wife, don't ever say you don't have enough faith unless you know karate. Because she's swinging, okay? <laughs> she's swinging. Uh, I love it when some of her friends call her on the phone during the day and they say, Missy, how are you doing today? And, you know, she's uh, brutally honest. And uh, some days are better than others, but 24 hours a day. The pain is there. She is never, uh, has never gone anywhere alone, has not driven a car in 20 years. And uh, sometimes her friends will say, well, Missy, you don't sound sick. And she goes, it's not my voice that's sick. <laughs> but the truth is, the, uh, the reality is, is that after 21 years, we have really found no diagnosis. We're not any closer, after 75 physicians, we're not any closer to an answer. And every single day, we continue to walk through it. And we are, is every day, is a journey of trust in God. And that's what I wanna share with you here today. That's what I wanna talk about. Uh, I, uh, I remember leaving the Mayo Clinic years ago and uh, uh, God bless you if you've ever been to the Mayo Clinic. It's, it's a great place to go. But leaving there that day, the doctor said to me, Mr. Dowie, let me tell you, if you've got the kind of pain that your wife has, and it is in the region of the head, and he described it like a tumor that is in her head, and she has the symptoms like a tumor, but there, there's no tumor. And he said that if you get this far with the kind of pain your wife has, uh, we don't know what to do. And he said this as we left, the brain is God's domain. Walking away that day, I said to myself, that doctor's wrong. The heart 
is God's domain. And today, you are dealing with pain in your life. You may, uh, pain in your life, you may be dealing with an illness, a sickness. It could be relational, it could be emotional, it could be addiction, it could be the death of somebody close, close to you. I promise you, the way to manage pain is to understand what God has promised us, where God is taking you and me. And uh, as I share it with you today, it's a difficult diagnosis and it's a difficult prescription. In John 16, Jesus is at the Lord's Supper, reclining at the table with the disciples. Judas has already gone. He's getting ready to prepare himself to betray our Lord. And Jesus is talking to the disciples, giving them last minute instructions. It is the last discipleship lesson. It is the last teaching. It's the last lesson. It's the last sermon he's going to have with his disciples. And he says this to them. In a little while, you're not gonna see me. But then in a little while, you will see me. And they said, what? They're scratching their head. They're trying to figure it out out, they don't know what's going on. Look at what it says in John 16, 17 and 18. At this, some of his disciples said to one another, what does he mean by saying in a little while you will see me no more, and then after a little while you will see me, and because I am going to the Father. They kept asking, what does he mean by uh, a little while, we don't understand what he is saying. What is your pain today? Do you understand it? Because let me tell you, the diagnosis that I have uh, given, because as I have walked in and out of churches, and I have walked in and out of the lives of many Christ followers, of many people that are seeking and trusting God, I have found out that many of us today have a psychosomatic Christianity. It's all in our heads, it's not in our hearts. Psychosomatic. And here's the bad news about this diagnosis. The prognosis is that it is fatal. If all your relationship to God, if it consists of nothing more than head games, than head knowledge of, hey, you know, I'm, I'm going to uh, you know, trust God as long as everything is okay in my life. If it is just a psychosomatic game, the prognosis for you, the prognosis for me would be fatal. We are dying. We are dying. You are dying without Jesus living in your heart. You see, the whole gospel is about the presence of of God in our lives, and the presence of God is represented by his peace. The disciples are going psychosomatic on Jesus here. They're scratching their head. What is he talking about? We don't understand, we don't get it. And Jesus says, you know what? Not one of you asked me where I was going. That's key. Not one of you asked me where I was going. Do you know where Jesus was going? He was going to the Father, the Bible says, so that the Comforter, the Comforter, could come to us. God knows what you need in your time of pain. God manages your pain and my pain from above, and the answer is peace in your heart. And you say, well, wow, Greg, my goodness. I go psychosomatic on God with that type of attitude. Missy and I have gone psychosomatic on God. Do you know how we do it? You go psychosomatic on God when you stop trusting him, when you stop talking to him, and when you stop thanking him. So, so important. When we try to reason our pain away, when we try to figure it out, when we deliberate and we spend so much time, you know, I, I just don't know why I'm in pain, and, and, and we mask it sometimes with saying, I'm praying about it. Let me tell you, 
I read in God's word that he has already delivered to you. He has already delivered to me. And he has sent the comforter into our lives for those that have bowed the knee to Christ so that we can have peace. It's the only way to manage the pain that you are going in. You say, Greg, what does this have to do with pain management? It has everything to do with pain management because pain management is about your heart. It's about your heart. That's the pro- that is the diagnosis. Are you ready for the prescription? Here we go. It's a tough pill. It's a horse pill. The blood work has already been done. Jesus has done it on the cross. The side effects have already been felt. They thrust a spear in his side. And if you want to get this pill down, if you want to get this pill down here today, you better drink a lot of living water because that's what it's going to take. Here it is. I call it through and through. Whatever you're going through, you're going through. <sighs> I don't like that. I, I, it's, it's hard for me to get that down. Through, I, I, whatever I'm going through, I'm going to go through. When I look and I search and research scripture, I, I find that when looking at the great men and women of God, I find that they went through it because God proved himself in their trials. Noah, Noah, God says, son, I'm going to send the rain, there's gonna be a flood, you're gonna have to go through the flood. Joseph never did really anything wrong, falsely accused, thrown into an Egyptian prison. And you know what? His his sentence wasn't light either. Read it in Genesis, years and years and years, Joseph was in prison. God was proving himself in his life. Joseph, whatever you're going through, son, you're gonna go through. Moses leads God's children out of captivity to the promised land. They're going through the desert and they're coming up against the Red Sea. What a wall. Behind them, Pharaoh's army. Wow, we're trapped. We're not gonna make it. We're not gonna, what are we gonna do? God, God's abandoned us. And God says, we're gonna go through it. We're gonna go through it. Read Matthew chapter 11 and John the Baptist is in prison and he sends one of his disciples to Jesus to ask if he's the one. Do you know what that scripture is really about? It's, it's not really on the surface what we think. What it is, is that John is asking if he's the one or not, because if he's not the one, he's getting out of prison, okay? He sends the disciple and Jesus says to the disciple, he goes, the blind see, the deaf hear, the lame walk, the leprous are healed, the dead are raised, and those that are in pain, God is for them. John. And here was the news. John, you're not getting out of prison. What you're going through, you're going through. The apostle Paul said, I prayed three times, three times, that you would take this pain away from me, God. And God said, my grace is sufficient for you. Paul, whatever you're going through, you're going through. And for 20 plus years, my wife has gone through this pain. There's been collateral damage. We have suffered as a family. Marriage, there's been a toll on our marriage. There's been a toll on our finances. It has been difficult. It has been tough. But just like what, like what my wife says, listen, if you're going through hell, don't stop. Keep going, keep going. And the deal is here today, I've I've got a picture of us. I I want you to see my wife right here. Uh, She doesn't look sick. Guess what? We don't look sick, some of us. But the Bible says we're all sick as hell. Without Jesus Christ in our hearts, the prognosis is fatal. The diagnosis is not good for us. What does God want to do with this pill? He wants to do two things. He wants to prove you and he wants to move you. He wants to prove you. In John 16, they're at the, uh, the Lord's Supper table, but in John 15, he says, those that are branches a part of the vine, I, I cut back, I prune back. It doesn't take a horticulturalist to know. Listen, if you cut a vine, that hurts. If you cut me, I'm gonna cry, okay? I'm gonna be in pain. Jesus is saying that I want to prove myself in your life. When was the last time 
you realistically stopped. Not being selfish, because there are many times that Missy and I have gone through that. What about us? When's the last time you stopped and, and you said, God, thank you for the pain. Thank you for the pain. Thank you so much. Let me show you what it says in 1 Peter chapter 1, 6 and 7. In all this you greatly rejoice, though now for a little while you may have had to suffer grief in all kinds of trials. These have come so that the proven genuineness of your faith of greater worth than gold. God wants to prove himself in your life, and God wants to prove what he wants to do and what he cares about. God is concerned about your pain. Are you sick? He, 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 he's, he's, he's concerned about it. He wants to, to see you well. Listen, is it, do you have a rare disease? Is it cancer? He cares. Have you suffered the loss of, of someone close to you? He cares. Are you in financial ruin? He cares. He really does, but not as much as he cares about your heart. He is the God of the rescue, the rescue of your heart. Ah, oh, he wants to prove himself in your life, and he also, he allows us to go through the fire, he allows us to go through the trouble, he allows us to go through the pain because he wants to move in your life. This is so apropos for Missy and myself. Second Corinthians 1, 4, he comes alongside us when we go through hard times. I like that. And before you know it, he brings us alongside someone else who is going through hard times so that we can be there for that person just as God was there for us. Could it be that you are overlooking God staring you right in the face in the pain of your life? Could it be that God has placed you in these troublesome times that you are going through in the pain that is there in your life? Could it be that God has put you there because that is where he wants you to minister. That's where he wants you to live. That's where he wants to prove himself in your life and in this world. God wants to move in us. And many times, he, we have to allow him to let all of the junk boil to the top when we are on fire. Don't remain psychosomatic. If you do anything here today, understand the diagnosis is that a lot of us just allow God to live up here in our minds where he came to die to rescue our hearts, and that's where he wants to live. And that's where you're going to experience the presence of God, the peace of God, when you allow him to live in your heart. So what do you do? I've got this thing I've discovered, I eat more peas. Yeah, I, I do. Not green peas. Here are the peas that I eat. The physician's prescription and pill and plan for your life is probably not going to be preemptive or preventative, but it is going, he's going to prove himself in your life, in my life, by showing us peace in the presence. Eat more peas. Eat more peas. You want me to say it again? I can't. I'll tweet it later, okay? Why does God allow us to go through hell-like experiences? Because he wants us to have heaven-like hearts that are serving him. If you're going through pain today, if you're going through pain, you might not see an end of it in this life. The ramifications, the collateral damage, it's sometimes horrendous. God promises us his presence, that he will be with us, that he will walk with us. Jesus is finishing up the talk at the Lord's Supper table. And he promises us, he's telling his guys, his disciples, his followers, it's gonna hurt. You're gonna have trouble in your life. Where did we get this idea? Where, where does it come from? 
That the Bible is just a, a book about, hey, if you do good and I do good and, and we help each other out, that, man, we're going to be healthy, wealthy, and wise. I don't see that. I see my God as a victorious God. He overcame the world, and that's what he says to these guys. And he asks them this question as he is telling them these last-minute instructions. Great question. He goes, do you believe me? Do you believe me? And that is the question for you today, is the question for me today, as we try to manage pain, as we walk through pain in our lives. Do you believe him? Do you really believe him? Or is it a head game? Are you playing head games with God and say, hey God, if you give me this, I'll give you this. Hey God, if you help me understand why I'm going through pain, then I will start serving you. God, if you, I, I, I'm, a, I'm a reason type person, God. I, I just want to understand and know and figure it out. You may be going through pain the rest of your life, and Jesus says, guys, do you believe me? How do we do that? How do we believe, how can we do it? The, realize, John 16, it's the last sermon. It's the last lesson. And the very last line of instruction given to you and me before he goes to the cross is this. I have told you these things so that in me you may have peace. In this world you will have trouble. But take heart. I have overcome the world. Somebody asked me last night, they said, Greg, who are you for in March Madness? I like basketball. I said, who are you for? And I can't keep track of 64 plus teams or whatever. I said, but I'm for the underdog. I want the guy in last place to win. Because you know what? So many times in my life, I have thought, I'm in last place. Does God care the pain I'm going through? I want you to know that I still pray every day, write it down in a journal, and I have a stack of them in my office. God, heal my wife. Heal my wife. But oh God, if you don't, I want to praise you the same way as if you healed her every day. You see, our God is a God of victory. Our God's a God of victory. Keep talking to him. Keep walking with him. Keep trusting him. Keep thanking him. Because what he wants to do, he wants to prove himself in your life, and he wants to move in your life in an incredible way. I love it. I love this passage of scripture because it brings us right where we are as a church entering into this week, marching to Easter, because that's where they were 2,000 years ago. They got up after John 17, where Jesus prayed for them. In John 18, they got up, and they went into the Garden of Gethsemane, and Jesus prayed there. And do you know his prayer? The Bible says Jesus knelt in the garden, and it was so intense. The pain was so palpable emotionally and spiritually that Jesus was sweating drops of blood. And, and, and he says, of Jesus talking to the Father, he says, Father, can this cup pass from me? Do you know what he's saying? God, this pain is, is tough. I don't want to go through this. And you know what God does in answering? Do you know what God says to his son? Nothing. The Bible says he sends an angel to minister to him, to encourage him, to give him strength. I find that poignant and meaningful to me when I go back to John 16. And Jesus says, I'm going to the Father. And not one of you asks where I'm going. Because if you would ask where I'm going, you would know what this is all about. Jesus was going to the Father so that the answer to your pain and the answer to my pain would come, the comforter, to give us peace. 
And while you may be looking for the answer, going psychosomatic, oh man, what is the answer? I don't get it. I, I'm praying, God, I don't understand. You've already said, God, just put the stamp on it. No, God has answered your prayer and my prayer. He's overcome the world with Jesus Christ. And he's come to give you and me peace by his presence. Let's pray together. God, thank you for the power of your word. Thank you for all the peas that we can eat today. God, many of us need to realize that the pain we're going through is God-ordained, maybe God-ordered, God-assured for us because, God, you want to prove yourself in our lives. You want to move in our lives. God, my prayer today for my friends is that we will experience the true medicine for our souls and for our hearts, and that is the presence of you in our lives that gives us peace. Father, if there's anybody here today that has never experienced that in their lives, if they've never bowed the knee to Jesus Christ, God, my prayer is that they will do that right now. You can do that. You can do that as you're sitting here with your heads bowed, your eyes closed. God, you say, God, come into my life. I have missed the mark. I have messed up. I have been a moral failure. I have sinned against you. I have been trying to play the psychosomatic game for so long. Jesus, come into my heart. Make me a new person. And the Bible says when you pray that prayer, immediately the presence of peace, the Prince of Peace, comes into your life and into your heart. God, my prayer today is that we will go forth knowing that you walk with us when we ask you into our hearts. God, we love you and we thank you. We ask it in Jesus' name, amen. Greg, thank you, what a word. You know, if you prayed that prayer and you're at one of our campuses or maybe you're online, just pound, take your smartphone out, pound your name to 32898 because when we get these texts, we'll communicate directly with you about the greatest decision that you can ever make, and that is to establish a relationship with Jesus Christ.